about 15 tips and tricks for your OBS. The first one is from our sponsor, Own.pro. With Own.pro, you can get a lot of different overlay packs with just one click. It's just like magic. You can choose this one or this one. And you can switch them around as much as you would like. They also offer epidemic sound music, which is the music I use for my streams. You know what the coolest thing about this is, guys? With code TREE, you will get 50% off. Link is down below in the description. So let's say you want to add your camera, for example, this. And now we want to make our camera smaller in OBS. We hold control and then we can drag them into proportions. So now it doesn't change proportions. You can also use the arrow keys to move it around if you just want it slightly to be moved. And if we want to cut these pieces off like here on the right and on the left, what we can do is hold alt and then drag in. And now we just have our face, our face camera. So we can add it like this. You can see all the green edges here are crops. The red one is the original output. So if you hold alt and drag out, you see this becomes red now. This is how you can crop the camera. If you wanted to fill your screen, right click, transform, fit to screen. And if you want to reset it, transform, reset, transform. And now it resets to the original output. You can also use the Stream Deck to switch scenes in OBS. I do have a video about how to switch scenes with your Stream Deck in OBS right here. So definitely check that out. And recently Elgato also did an update with some new functions for OBS. I'll leave a link to that video underneath in the description. So as you see my OBS, you can see there's a chat here. And if I connect this back to Twitch, you will see that there is an activity feed here too where people will follow it and the chat right here. If you want to get this, you can go to obs.live. That's the website where you can download the plugin for your OBS, where you have the activity and your stream chat in. Then number five is using pronouns in your Twitch chat in OBS. So why is this helpful? Because then you know which pronouns your viewers want to use. Because I want to keep this video short, I explain it all in this video. So definitely check that out. So let's say you have your capture card right here and you have like overlays on it or something like that. What we can do is we can output a scene to a different monitor by right clicking on it and then full screen project your source and then clicking on one of your screens. So now this is just my main screen and you see it full screen, but we can also do it on the second screen. Now it's on a screen there, which you guys don't see, but it's there. <laughs> this way, if you have a capture card with no delay, for example, the HD60S Plus from Elgato, then you can put that one on your second screen and you're still using the PC. However, you can still see your Switch or your PlayStation or your Xbox on it. And this is a pro because normally in OBS, you would also see your overlay and stuff like that. And you won't see that yourself then. Same you can do with a screen behind you. If you have a screen behind you, a monitor, and you have that connected with an HDMI cable, what you can do is just full project one of these sources on there. So full projector and you click on the screen that is on. Or you can even do that with a scene and you can full projector that scene on a certain monitor. So you can choose whichever monitor you're going to use in the back. This way you can, for example, have alerts or your chat be displayed behind you. A smart way to go about things is making groups in OBS. If you make a group, you can instantly add all your audio sources to a scene. Or you can add your camera border with your camera and maybe your alerts in one go. I have a whole video explaining how you can make them, how you can color code them and what nested scenes are and the difference between groups and nested scenes right here. I definitely recommend watching that because it makes it so much easier to work in OBS and to keep track of all your sources. Did you know you can actually hide audio sources? For example, here, this one comes with the camera, but we're not going to use the audio from the camera. So what we can do is mute this and then right click on here and we can hide it. Now we don't see it in the mixer anymore. The reason why we want to do this is that if you have sources that you don't use and they'd be here, you can't see the sources that you actually want to look at. For example, your desktop audio or your microphone. If we hide them, then we can still see the desktop audio and the microphone here. If you want to find them back, right click and unhide all. And it's back. What you can also do is put your stream output as a camera in Discord. So for example, here we have this now, but we can have way more in our scene. If we click on virtual camera, we can get that back in our Discord and we can see the same thing. Be careful though, you see yourself mirrored, but other people don't actually see yourself mirrored because that's just a thing Discord does for yourself. So it's not weird if you want to aim a certain way, you're going to aim the right way. <laughs> but I do have a video explaining this thoroughly right here. So if you don't get it immediately, not a problem because I explained it all there. Then we have the replay buffer. Okay, what this is, is you click on settings, then you go to output, 
replay buffer and you click on enable replay buffer. If you do not see this, click on the simple and then click here on advanced. Here we can set the amount of replay buffer. This is kind of like Twitch clips where you can save the last 60 seconds that happened. So if you put 60 here, the last 60 seconds will be saved. If you put more or less here, that amount will be saved. We click on apply and okay. Then you see this button here. If you don't see it yet, just restart OBS. We click on this, then the 60 seconds start running. This means that if you press a hotkey or a button on the stream deck that says save replay buffer, we can actually save those 60 seconds and they will be saved in the same folder as you save your recordings. You can find them by going to settings, output, recording, and then it says here, video raw for me. For you, it will probably say something else because that's where you save them. Then another cool thing that you can do is change your webcam shape. So in my main scene collection, what we see is if we go to the game section, you can see that my webcam border is round. And this normally is my camera, but I'm recording with that right now, so you don't see it. But you see that the camera is round here. I can do that with webcam masks. It's actually pretty easy to do as it's just a filter, but it can be very intimidated if you don't know how to do it. So that's why I have a video about it. I'll leave that down below in the description because I can only link up to five videos and I'm not sure how far I got yet because I kind of got lost <laughs> counting. So if you have a browser source and you want it to display in your audio mixer here, what you can do is you can go to the audio source, right click it, go to properties. And then here, if you scroll down, control audio via OBS. And this way there will be new audio sources like this coming in. Now you can set the volume for the specific browser source louder or less loud without having to change your desktop audio. What I would also recommend is going to settings Go into audio and disable all these. I know you don't have desktop audio now, but what we can do is we can go to the plus and add an audio output device. Now we can actually make our own desktop sound by adding our headphones in. And basically the desktop sound will be the same as what you're hearing through your he headphones, which is basically the desktop sound. If you don't want to see this preview, right click and then disable preview. Well, it just says enable preview, but you click it again, then it disables it. And now you don't see the streamception. So if you're recording OBS, then you don't see that the recording of the recording. Another pro of this will be that if you have a slow PC, this costs a little bit less effort for your PC because it doesn't have to show you real time what is happening in your stream. Downside is that you don't know what's happening real time on your stream. Yeah. <laughs> and enable it by clicking on it again. Then we also have multi-view. So what we can do is we go to view here. It says multi-view full screen and multi-view windowed. If we click on multi-view windowed, we get this. And this is kind of like what I use on TV. These are all the scenes. So this is my preview, kind of what you would have in the studio mode here as preview. And the program is what is live. Then we see some scenes down here. And if we click on them, you see that they actually switch the scenes. You can also see the name of the scenes underneath it, away, full cream, no chroma. But you can see multiple scenes in here and you can see where you can switch to and how they will look like before switching to them like this. There's so many cool things you can do with OBS and I have a whole playlist dedicated to OBS. So I definitely recommend jumping with me in this playlist where I explain so many things about OBS because this is just a fraction of what you need to know. And you probably want to become an OBS pro, don't you? I think you do, right? So just click here and I'll see you there.